Hi, this is Jacob Nicholson with InMotion Hosting, and today I'm going to teach you how to easily move a WordPress site to a new server. If you happen to follow along in my previous tutorial, I basically explained taking a WordPress site hosted on WordPress.com and exporting and then importing all that content into a WordPress self-hosted site here at example.com forward slash WordPress. Now in this example, I'm going to basically walk you through taking a WordPress self-hosted site and migrating that to a new server. Now, most of the times you're going to have example.com or your domain set up at two web hosts at once as you're migrating things. Um, but in this example, I actually went ahead and set up a completely new domain of example.net that currently doesn't have any files on it. And I'm going to take this example.com WordPress site and move it there, um, basically in showing you all the steps along the way. So the very first step is you're going to want to open up your favorite FTP client. In this case, I'm using FileZilla. And then just go ahead and you're going to want to connect to the previous host that you have the WordPress site on. Now, if you already have your domain name moved over to your new host, here in the host, you're probably going to want to use the IP address of your old WordPress site or the temporary host name that your host gave you. Once you're connected to the server, you're going to navigate to the document root directory, typically called public underscore HTML. It can also be referred to sometimes as HTTP docs. Now once you're in that folder, had you just installed WordPress in the main document root, you would basically be looking at this right here, which is all the WordPress files. And in that case, what you would basically want to do is just, you know, I, I would typically create a new directory locally, just called WordPress, select one of the files, and then hit Control A to select them all, and move that over into that local directory. Now, because I already have my WordPress site set up in a subfolder called WordPress, I can simply just start dragging that over to my local computer. And here you can see it, it's going through and downloading all the files. Now, depending on if you have a bunch of uh, images and uploads to your WordPress site that you're migrating, it can take quite a while to download. So while that's you know taking its time, we can go ahead and begin the next step, which is actually downloading your WordPress database. Now to do this, you'll need to go to your website's uh, you know, cPanel or control panel, well, basically whatever your host gives you that gives you access to your databases. In this case with InMotion Hosting, we can simply navigate to the database section and use PHP MyAdmin to export our databases. Here I'm going to go ahead and expand all the databases under my example user. And this example underscore WP1 is the WordPress uh, database. And you can see that confirmed here by having all the WordPress tables. Basically all you want to do is just click on the export tab up here. And then under the export method, you can just leave it on quick and the format as SQL or structured query language, and then just hit go. And so now what we've done is essentially um, with FileZilla, we're downloading all of the core WordPress files. And that's how you know WordPress is actually able to function on the server. And then what we've done is also exported the database, and that's actually going to include all of our posts and the links to the images that you know we've downloaded through FileZilla and whatnot. So once you have that done, the next step is you want to start setting things up on your new server. So in this case, I'm going to navigate to example.net forward slash cPanel, and I'm going to log in to this domain's control panel. And what I want to use now is called the MySQL database wizard or whatever access you have to basically create databases on your server. Now I'm going to stick with the same naming convention, but you can see now my new database is going to be called example2 because it's a different user uh, underscored WP1. And then I'm also going to set up a user here called WP1 as well. Now I'm just using a very simple password here um, 
just for demonstration purposes but you always do want to make sure you're using a strong database password you can typically just use the password generator right here and then click on create user to go ahead and set that user up now finally I'm gonna to want to check all privileges here so that my user right here has access to all of these different things on that database so that it can alter the database, drop tables, create indexes, all that good stuff. And then you just click on next step. So basically now what you have is you have all of your WordPress, um, your previous WordPress site, you have all of the files themselves downloading to your local computer, and you've already downloaded the database backup as well, and then you've also created a new database on the new server that you would like to use this, you know, WordPress site on. So the next step is let's go ahead and check on FileZilla. Yep, and we can see it's done uh, queuing all the files, so everything is downloaded. So what we'll want to do next is actually navigate to that downloads directory uh, into the WordPress directory and then there's going to be this wp-config.php file we want to take a look at. And again you can see this is basically using all the information from the previous server. So we want to update this to the information we just created on the new server. So the username is going to be example2 underscore WP1 as well as the database name here. And then the database password actually just changed uh, to my DB password, which is just a very, again, simple password for demonstration purposes. You might also notice, um, depending on the host you came from, this local host, it might be something like mysql.example.com or something like that. Um, more than likely, though, you're going to want to change that to local host to basically tell the WordPress installation that it can just look on the exact same server that it's running the WordPress files from for the WordPress database as well. Now, once you've gone ahead and modified these to match the database that you created on the new server that you're migrating WordPress to, just go ahead and, and save that file. Now, once you have all of that saved, um, the next thing that you're going to want to do is go ahead and migrate those WordPress files to the new server. So in this case, I'm going to use example.net, and we'll go ahead and connect and go to the document root directory. And again, we're going to see that there's currently no files installed there. Now here's our local WordPress directory that we downloaded from the previous server we can just go ahead and drag that over into the new server so it can begin uploading all of those files. Now while that's going ahead and uh, uploading all of our files we can go ahead and here go back to return home to our main cPanel interface of the example.net site and the next thing that we're going to want to do is actually import our MySQL database. So again we're going to use the PHP my admin tool and then this time what we're going to want to do is uh, again select the example2 underscore WP1 database and you can see there's currently no tables found in the database that's because there's there's nothing in this database yet we've simply created it and assigned a user to it so what you want to do now is click on the import tab and then right here where it says browse your computer Go ahead and click on choose file and then select the WordPress database backup that we made from the previous server and click on open. Now you'll see right here it has that selected and usually for the most part you can go ahead and, and leave all of these default settings that phpMyAdmin uses and then just click on go. Now after several seconds, um, you'll see up here it'll say please be patient as it's uploading that SQL file to the server. Um, and then there you go, after just a, a little bit, you can see the import has been successfully finished and 33 queries were executed on the database. So now if we take a look, um, we can go ahead and see, yep, there's all of our WordPress tables. Now, one thing to note, um, we can come back here to the example.net site and go ahead and navigate to the WordPress directory. And you, you'll think, hey, we're done. It, it looks like everything got migrated over successfully from WordPress.com 
to work or uh, example.com rather to example.net and that's great but this would work you you'd be completely done had you been migrating your WordPress site from example.com on an old server to example.com on a new server but in this case we did change the domain name itself from example.com to example.net so one thing you'll notice, for instance, if we come here and try to log in on example.net slash WordPress, it's going to take us to example.com. And that's because when we migrated over the WordPress database, it retained the information exactly for the .com version of the site. Now there's a really easy way to fix this in our new database on the new server. We can just browse the WP options table and then you would want to go ahead and there's two places right here uh, site URL you want to click on edit and then change that from example.com to example.net slash WordPress and click go and then down here uh, under home you want to click on edit and again go to example.net or you know whatever you change the WordPress domain to uh, forward slash WordPress and click go. Now when we come back here if we refresh it um, basically if we click on any of these links now it's gonna remain within the example.net uh, site or you know the new server and we can go ahead and try to log in here and there you go we now have successfully migrated this uh, self-hosted WordPress site from one server on example.com to another server on example.net. Now again, if you were not changing the domain name, you would not need to do that last step we did by coming in here and modifying the site URL and the home address. Because um, those are basically set here just in the settings general. It sets your WordPress address as well as your site address and it stores that information in the database. But had you simply been, you know, moving your example.com domain to a new server, you would retain that same example.com domain. So that wouldn't need to go back and be changed after the fact. So um, that's all really there is to it in migrating one WordPress site over from one server to another server. I hope that information was helpful and it didn't bore you too much. Uh, if you did have any questions about this process, feel free to comment on the video below or on the accompanying article and I'd be glad to help you out some further. Uh, as always, this is Jacob Nicholson with InMotion Hosting and thanks a lot for watching.